verses 6 through 18. Amen. Those of you that do not have your Bible, it is on the screen behind us. Amen. Amen. We're going to talk about, we began last week talking about authority. We talked about it when we preached from the message, come what may, it's still yes. And it takes some mighty authority to be able in the face of the enemy and in the face of trials to continue to say yes. And you got to have some authority to be able to do that. Any old weak, jelly-backed person could do that. Amen. Because some people, when trials and troubles come, they run the other way. Amen. But how many of you know that we are wired that when trials and troubles come, instead of running the other way, we run into their direction. Amen. Amen. But our scripture this morning is quite lengthy. It's 12 verses, but you will get the picture. Amen. It is 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. We're going to begin reading this morning the sixth verse, and we're going to go all the way down to the 18th verse. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. 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 And I'm reading from the New King James Version, and it says, For God, somebody say, For God. For God. For God, who hath commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We're going to park at verse 7, but we're reading throughout. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power, somebody say power, power. may be of God and not of us. Yeah. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For which we live are always delivered, I'm sorry, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. Amen. So we're going to die every chance that we get. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So, then death worketh in us, but life in you. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we not faint. For which cause we not faint. For though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our life affliction which is for a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Do me a favor, before you go back to 7, go back to verse 17 and work your way up. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more and exceeding and eternal weight of glory. The affliction is momentary. The weight of glory is eternal. Go back up to 15. For all things are for your sakes, the good, the bad, and the ugly, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound the glory of God. So when you go through, give him thanks. Before you go through, give him thanks. When you come out, give him thanks. 
Now we go back to verse, no, go back to verse, no, go back to seven. We go back to seven now. This is where we're going to park today. But we have this treasure. How many weeds we got in here today? Amen. Everybody yeah. should throw your hand up. For we, all of us, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We are earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Before you take your seats, it's not a real catchy phrase where you can look and snap your neck at your neighbor, but it's a phrase that is full of authority. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. by the power, by the power. Vested, in me. vested in me. Amen. By the power vested in me. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. By the power vested in me. Father, we thank you now and we praise you. Speak, O oh Lord, for we, your children, are listening. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. By the power vested in me, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We were all born into this sinful world as empty balls of flesh. Yes, when we were born, some of us came out of our mother crying. And even for some of us, the doctor had to give us a pop on our butts to make us cry. Most of us would say that that baby was born full of life. But you're partially correct. The baby is born with life on the inside, but the life is far from being full. If life in a baby was already full, then the baby would not ever have to worry about getting saved, delivered, and set free. If life in a baby was already full, then the baby would not ever have to worry about the importance of having a prayer life. If life in a baby was already full, then the baby would not ever have to worry about getting victory over the devil attacking them later on in life. This is why Jesus, this is why God sent Jesus at one time, because at one time there was a man who was full of life. However, Terry, this man was created. He was not born. You know him as Adam. When Adam was created, and God himself breathed into him the breath of life, Adam received absolutely everything that he could have ever needed to live on planet Earth. However, when Adam traded his eternal power for temporary pleasure, uh-oh, amen, 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 when Adam traded his eternal power Power mm -hmm. for some temporary pleasure. Yes, I'm going to say it again. Yes. When Adam traded his eternal power mm -hmm. for temporary pleasure, yes. when Lord traded his eternal power for temporary pleasure, yes. when Alice traded yes. her temporary her eternal power yes. for temporary yes. pleasure, when all of you traded yes. your eternal power yes. for temporary pleasure, yes. it caused those of us who follow after him yes. to be born with partial life. Yes. This is why the Bible rehearses in John 10 and 10b the words of Christ when he says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Somebody know the word. This is why the Bible in 2 Corinthians 3 and 6 B says, For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Adam was not the only being created complete and full of life. Coming down from Adam, down through Jesus, and I'm sorry, Adam was the only being Created complete and full of life. But now we come down from Adam. Down through Jesus. 
and finally knocking on our doors, we realize and must accept the fact that we grow both naturally and spiritually, that there are some things that God will have to give us, have to put in us, have to add to us, and in order for us to survive and hopefully make it to heaven one day. No matter what we do in life, whether in the natural or in the spiritual, we have to have some help to get it done. I have a close friend who grew up always wanting to be a mortician. He served in the military in the Mortuary Affairs Unit. He went to school to become a mortician. He worked as an embalmer in the local funeral establishment. However, when his vision outgrew the place that he was in, and when it outgrew the resources that he had at that time, he needed to secure some help. Right. Not saying that the vision wasn't initially given to him. But in order for him to get it up off the ground, he needed someone who had more resources than he did to invest. Right. Somebody say invest. Yes. He needed somebody with some more resources to invest in him to help bring his vision to pass. And in life, the more you endeavor to accomplish, the more outside help you're going to need. Yeah. This is why a minister or the justice of the peace, when they have a couple standing before them to get married, no matter how elaborate they make the ceremony, no matter how simple they make the ceremony, he or she will always end saying, and by the power vested in me, by the state of North Carolina, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Without some higher power investing in them, they will not be able to perform this sacerdotal rite of, mass of marriage. Stay close, I'm going somewhere. But how many of you know I'm preaching already? Well, there is someone who is higher than the state of North Carolina. There is someone who is higher than the United States Supreme Court. There is someone who is higher than the President of the United States who is able and willing to invest in us resources to accomplish that which we see in front of us but are not able to accomplish on our own. His name is God. And God has invested, invested in us three things that will help us to accomplish those seemingly unsurmountable tasks and visions that we have on the inside of us. No, it is not life, health, and strength. No, it is not peace, joy, and happiness. No, it is not even favor, fortune, and fame. But God has invested in us power. God has invested in us authority. And lastly, God has invested in us jurisdiction. Let me tell you something. God has invested in each of us today power. Power is defined as great or unmarked ability to do or act. In other words, he has invested in us the ability. Secondly, God has invested in us authority. Authority is the power or the right delegated or given. In other words, he's invested in us the right. And lastly, God has invested in us jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is the act of controlling, regulation, domination, or command. In other words, he's invested in us the command. God, with his awesome and his good self, has invested in us the ability, the right, and the actuality of getting the task accomplished. No matter how large it is, God has given us the power, the authority, and the jurisdiction. No matter how hard it is, God has given us the power, the authority, and the jurisdiction. No matter how life-threatening it may seem, God has invested in us the power, the authority, and the jurisdiction to conquer it, not because we've been so great. Not because we've even got it all together. But simply because of who he is. Somebody say 
God is great. God is great. And greatly to be praised. By way of introduction, as we get ready to go, the Apostle Paul writes this second epistle to the church at Corinth and writes in a special path and on a specific track of things. He starts out writing about the forgiveness of an offender. Uh-oh, that sounds like us. Then he starts writing about having a ministry of glory. Then he starts to write about an honest and true.